Good morning to everyone. And I am glad to uh, have this opportunity to show you some uh, relevant uh, issue about uh, the filling of IMAP uh, uh, data standards and data dictionary. With this uh, um, lecture of today, I would like to uh, have some deep understanding of uh, specific issues that are related to monitoring data that have to be uh, collected on fields in order uh, to have the data standard and data dictionary properly filled uh, when you are going to archive and upload and transfer data sets on the IMAP info system. I will show you some specific examples about uh, specific monitoring modules that are on IMAP and what are the, I would say, most common uh, information that uh, uh, in many cases uh, uh, are missed during data collection on fields and uh, which are the consequences of such missing information on the data standards. So uh, I would like to start with uh, module B1 that is about uh, coral regions habitat and uh, one of the first information that we are going to uh, provide uh, on the uh, area for example here you have the excel sheet about the area well here you will have some uh, three information about the gis file multi beam file on ddm and file size consumer it's very usual that uh, during the survey, uh, for some reasons, uh, you will have no uh, instruments or tools in order to have this multi-beam or false consoner, uh, but they are actually really important uh, in order to have uh, some bathymetry and morphological characteristics uh, of uh, the, the, the seafloor where your habitat stands. So I'd like to highlight the fact that uh, multi-beam or 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 and size consoner are two very important information. Other information that are also relevant uh, regards the uh, depth type that actually on the standards uh, for this module is not mandatory as you can see from the data dictionary. In fact all the fields are red in color and so they are not mandatory but this type of information on the uh, debris types on the seafloor are becoming more and more important so uh, this is uh, i would say more a suggestion an invitation that uh, a prescription but it's very important uh, if you go on field and you make the survey to collect information on the depth type. If you do that, I would like to highlight the fact that in the standard there is some list for depth types, and this is the list. So uh, it is also important that you classify the actual uh, type of liters that you are going to survey according to this list. Other issues that I would say are very important and I usually missed during the monitoring is the fact that uh, when you go to the, uh, I would say, the, for example, megabentos uh, rob information, you can see here from the data dictionary that there are many information about species and uh, the most important of this information adapt are actually the coverage uh, in terms of uh, hypobiosis and necrosis. These two information are really, really very important uh, in order to make the assessment uh, of this type of habitat, uh, the coralliginous. Uh, and uh, it's very usual that you will have some taxonomic uh, classification of the species of this habitat, uh, but you actually miss to provide this type of information on epibiosis and necrosis. 
So in the example that uh, we have here in the file, if you consider these two types of species, uh, the first one is a structuring one and the second one is not a structuring one, as you can see from the list, so here the point is that uh, this type of information on the coverage uh, on epibiosis and necrosis uh, should be actually provided. And also there are information and entrapment. And I would also um, highlight the fact that uh, for this type of species, for this species that is a structuring one, also the coverage in terms of percentage, so for example I would say 34 percentage, this indicate that this structuring species cover the 34 percentage of the substrate. And so for structuring species this is a very relevant uh, information. Otherwise uh, for other species not structuring one this is not so relevant. So here the strong suggestion is to provide every information uh, on epibiosis and necrosis. There are also uh, other information about the survey that you make with the ROV and uh, this information as you can hear, you can see from this Excel sheet regards actually uh, the coral presence, exposure, slope and sedimentation you can see from the data dictionary here that this type of information uh, are classified according to some list of values uh, that you can see here. So for example, if the bottom type uh, is uh, uh, biogenic boulders or blocks and so on, or the coral presence, uh, well, I would say that also for slope and sedimentation to carefully look at this uh, list of values uh, before going on fields uh, in order that you can properly classify what you actually are collecting. In many times, uh, or people forget to, to actually collect this type of information or they actually do collect, but they do not use this type of list of values. And then after that, uh, it's difficult to transform uh, the information that they have collected in the ones that are required by the list. So it is very important to look at this list uh, in order to have the proper information uh, collected. I very quickly go to the second information standard or data standard and data edition that I'd like to discuss with you is the ones uh, regarding the Posidonia. In this type of standards uh, that is uh, subdivided in area, site uh, and transect, uh, one of the issues that usually comes out is the fact that uh, in the area uh, actually you have, uh, oh, sorry, not the area, but the transect and the measures here, you actually have the station typology and the station typology, there are actually two station typology. One is uh, for the upper limit, uh, as I would say, another is for the inferior limit and are regarding as one and two. Many times when this type of survey is made, uh, this type of, uh, uh, this, this uh, two type of station, they are not usually or not always uh, recording. So here the suggestion is strongly to distinguish between these two type of stations. One, as I said, is about the upper limit uh, that is here, uh, I, in some conventional way say that it's at 15 meters a uh, sample depth but it is just a point where the meters uh, starts and then there is the stations at the lower limit and many times uh, it happens uh, that the survey is made in somewhere in the meters uh, not corresponding to any of these two type of stations so here the strong suggestion is to assure that your uh, monitoring stations are located according to these two typology of station. Then there is the study area that is uh, differentiated between A, B and C for each of the station. 
and you go with your uh, with your uh, survey about the survey itself uh, uh, here i can highlight the fact that there are some very important information that are not always uh, reported and this regards uh, both for the uh, upper limit and the lower limit uh, the, for example bearing orthotropic uh, rhizome lands that are expressed uh, in centimeter and so here for example we i put one or four for the two for the orthotropic or plagiotropic rhizome and uh, this information are really very important uh, on the measures that you make from the meadows uh, so uh, this type of uh, quantitative uh, analysis is really important to assure how and assess how is the condition of the Posidonia. Probably one of the uh, more difficult issues about the standard is the fact that this standard is about the condition of the habitat, not only on the extension. And many times uh, these informations are missed. Also, I would say that uh, we have uh, similar, uh, similar problems on shoots where we have also many information to provide some of them are in red as you can see from here but some not and uh, here also there is the for every shoot uh, there is this issue to provide the specific information in terms of centimeter and so on so carefully look at the information that are mandatory and assure that you collect these on field because this information is about the condition of the habitat and actually provides you the trend in how this habitat uh, is going to to be if it is good or is improving or if it is going to uh, be less good than before the last thing about uh, this standard that i wanted to highlight uh, is the information about the sediment here mm, the sediment uh, are provided uh, at, at in the proximity of the middle it means that you have to put this uh, type of sampling uh, in uh, at the upper limit of the sta station or in the lower limit uh, so you do not uh, basically sample sediment uh, wherever uh, i don't know at uh, 10 or 5 kilometers from the meadows but you actually have to sample the sediment uh, in the proximity and this type of information, even if uh, it is not mandatory, is, is strongly suggested to actually survey this because the grain size uh, is really, really important for the condition, to assess the condition of the habitat. I would go to the next standard that I wanted to discuss with you, that is about uh, uh, nutrient and eutrophication. This is something more standard if you want, because the, this type of information is uh, something that has been monitored from more times. And so these are information and monitoring protocols the, that are really more uh, consolidated. But there, in any case, uh, there are some information that usually miss to be, uh, to be collected. Uh, one of the most common is the distance of the station in kilometers that can in any case be recovered by the, the, the geographical position, but also the sea depth is something that not always is recorded. And above all, the area typology, if it is reference, coastal, hotspot or other, this is some very important information about your monitoring station. So, do not just go there and make your sampling and analytical uh, analysis, but uh, also record the type of station, the area typology where your monitoring station is in. And uh, I would say that also in the other uh, type, in the other uh, Excel sheet where you actually uh, put the, the, the concentration of the parameters, uh, Another information is the sampling depth that you have to consider. 
and uh, usually you have some of this information that is provided by a probe so you actually put the probe and the, the probe gives you the sample depth but in some cases you, you actually uh, have this uh, monitoring with a water sample and you have to record the sample that at which the water sample has been sampled. These are some new obvious things but uh, sometimes this information is missing. So both about sample depth or sea depth. The other standard that I wanted to briefly discuss and highlight some of the uh, missing uh, information is actually on contaminants, uh, so on module P1. Here, one of the most, most common uh, missing information regards the biota, for example. Here I made two examples, one is on Mytilus and the other one is uh, uh, Merluchus. And actually, uh, many times the information about the species, specimen length and standard deviation and weight, this is in centimeters, so I, for example, can say that this is seven centimeters for Mytilus and this is 34 centimeters for Merluchus and uh, the weight, I would say it is expressed in gram, so I can also say that is about, uh, I don't know, 45 gram, or here it's about uh, 400 gram for the Lucius, but of course also even more. And many times this time information is not there. But also the tissue sometimes is not uh, indicated. So for example, for Milius could be most probably soft tissue and that's all but for tissue for Merluchus uh, you have a muscle it could be muscle or it could be other type of tissue and these other type of tissues are uh, highlighted here in uh, this list so as you can see there are many uh, examples that uh, example of tissues that can be for example it could be some gonads organs or some 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 type of organs like gonads kidney or liver and so on so uh, the type of tissue is also very important i would say and also other uh, information uh, uh, for example the fat content uh, and also the extractable, uh, sorry, and so the fat content is also important for uh, biota. So last but not least, uh, that uh, information that I usually missed on fields collection is about uh, the uh, marine litter on the beach. And uh, in this type uh, of uh, standards, uh, one of the most common issues that we encounter in this case is the fact that uh, on the beach, as you can see here from the beach ID form, some, some many information about uh, how the beach is, uh, is with, uh, this is an, inf an information that is rather useful provided, but there are some other type of information that are not usually provided. For example, prevailing currents, prevailing winds, and the beach orientation. Many times the, the type of beach in terms of coverage, this is provided in terms of sand, pebbles and rocky coast, but also uh, many information about, uh, for example, the local people uh, who use these or not, if it is uh, used for some bathing or not, uh, and if it is fishing and so on, you can see that there is a long list uh, of additional information about the beach and uh, all this information are really important, are really of the utmost importance uh, in order to assess uh, the beach litter that is on there. So uh, regarding the beach litter I would say and I would strongly suggest uh, to make uh, what uh, this is usually uh, usually mm, considered as the so-called beach profile is to uh, go on the beach and collect uh, with this type of information in front of you all the information that are really relevant. 
and uh, this is something this is some static information that usually do not change too much from one uh, survey to the other from one year to the other so it's something that uh, is usually done once uh, and then you repeat this information or update uh, i would say very few of this information in the future so this is all about uh, the type of information that I would like to highlight uh, uh, in order to make your um, monitoring survey on field as much as uh, complete and compliant to what the data standards and data dictionaries of IMAP really require. So good work and uh, also good uh, have a, a good and uh, efficacious uh, and uh, I would say also enjoying uh, monitoring survey of our seas. Thank you very much.